Welcome to Geology of the Earth. I am Fabiana Richter. Hey guys and girls. So today I'm planning on doing a the beginning of a series on uh, the positional environments. So today's episode is going to be about lakes. And why lakes? Because I am studying lakes. I'm studying actually ancient lakes in my um, PhD. That's why I am planning to kind of ally the videos from Geology of the Earth with um, the things that I'm working on uh, during my PhD studies. So today, it's kind of an introduction on the subject. We will uh, discuss uh, what are lakes, what are they important, so why do we care, um, how are lakes formed, and then we will uh, talk about the dimensions of the lakes. So um, let's do it. It's going to be a very interesting video and I hope you enjoy it. So let's begin. All right, so what are lakes? Lakes are inland bodies of water that form when water accumulates and is retained in a topographic low on the land surface. The water level in chemistry is controlled by inflow and outflow of water. The inflow comes from streams that supply water and sediment from the surrounding region into the lake, from precipitation and in a few cases from groundwater. The outflow occurs when lakes lose water by flow out into a river and or by evaporation from the surface. The most common lake sediments are sand and mud, but other sediments like salts and organic matter are often present. Therefore, the lithologies we usually find in paleolakes are sandstone, mudstone, limestones, evaporites and sometimes beds of coal, oil and gas source rocks. The study of modern lakes is referred to as limnology. And why are lakes important in earth sciences? There are many reasons for that. The first one is that the sediments in paleo lakes have the ability to record past climate. The second is that paleo lakes usually have very well preserved fossil content. And finally, they usually have deposits of economic significance. So let's talk about climate and lakes. Lake chemistry and sediment deposition is very sensitive to climatic conditions. Climate affects, for instance, the global distribution of lakes, the balance between evaporation and precipitation, which determines partially the lake level, the type of chemical sedimentation ranging from carbonate deposition to gypsum to halite and other evaporites. And finally, the vegetation cover around the lake, which influences sediment inputs into a lake. Lake sedimentation and chemistry are affected by climate in many ways, and we will get into more detail about that in another opportunity. The important thing to remember here is that sedimentary lake deposits often record the climate condition in which they form, so we can look at them to inform paleoclimate characteristics. Paleo lakes usually contain well-preserved fossils of plants and animals. For instance, very well-preserved fish, gastropods, bivalves, ostracods, arthropods, and algae are usually found in the Lacustrian record. The organism's assemblages may be useful not only for finding out the age of the lake, but also to infer paleoclimate conditions in the region according to life supported in the lake. Another reason why lakes are important for geology is that they may contain deposits of economic significance. So what's happening here is that many lakes with abundant deposition of organic matter formed beds that became source material for coal, gas and oil. In addition, they may contain significant quantities of evaporite minerals, uranium or iron. But how do lakes form? Well, the basins or depressions where water accumulates can be formed by a variety of mechanisms that are listed here. We will focus on the two first ones, the tectonic movements and glacial processes. That first mechanism we mentioned involves tectonic movements, such as folding and rifting. The most important ones are the processes of continental extension to generate rifts, strike slip within continental crust and intracontinental sag basins. 
Intracontinental sac basins are depressions formed by the broad subsidence of the crust, therefore they tend to form lakes that are larger and shallower. In strike slip and rift basins, faults cause parts of the land surface to subside relative to the surrounding area, causing the drainage to follow its course into this topographic low. Examples of lakes and rift systems are Lake Tanganyika in the East African Rift System and Lake Baikal in the Baikal Rift System in Siberia. Now, glacial processes may form depressions on the land surface when glaciers scour deeply into a valley. They will create depressions on the valley floor and when the ice retreats, these over-deepened parts become areas where lakes can form. Lakes can also be formed when glacial processes form a terminal moraine, which is a natural dam of detritus or a ridge that lie across a valley floor and mark the limit of glacial advance. The largest modern lake on the planet in area is the Saline Inland Caspian Sea with a surface area of 371,000 km2. Other large lakes with surface areas ranging between 50,000 and 100,000 km square are Lake Superior, Lake Huron and Lake Michigan in North America. Also Lake Victoria located between Uganda and Kenya in Africa and Lake Arau east of the Caspian Sea. Qinghai Lake is one of the highest lakes on the planet and also the largest lake in China, located in the northern Tibetan Plateau, with a surface area of 4,250 meters square at an elevation of 3,194 meters above sea level. And ancient lakes also ranged in size from small ponds to large bodies of water. Three of these larger ones are the late Triassic Popo Age Lake of Wyoming and Utah, which had a minimal aerial extent based on the preserved sediment record of 130,000 km square. There is also the Jurassic Todichi Lake of the eastern Colorado Plateau with an area of 150,000 km square. And finally, we have the one in the Eocene Green River Basin with an area of about 100,000 km square. Now what about water depths? Water depths and Ayuru extent are not necessarily related, though some of the largest lakes have very shallow depths and vice versa. For instance, Lake Victoria has a surface area of 68,000 km square, but an average depth of only 40 meters. Now Crater Lake, which sits in a volcano caldera in Oregon and is the deepest lake in the United States, has a surface area of about 52 km square and an average depth of 350 meters. Now our winner is the world's deepest lake, located in the Baikal Rift System, Lake Baikal in Siberia, with an average depth of 744.4 meters, a maximum depth of 1,642 meters and a surface area of 31,722 kilometers square. And that's the end of our video. Today we talked about lakes, how are they formed, why are they important, what are their dimensions. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed your time here, please like and subscribe.